Hey y'all, what it do? It's Young Honey. And we're doing an insurgency today. Y'all should already know what it is. It's, it's fucking week eight. Week seven or week eight. You should already know what it is. Um... Welcome. So, first thing we're doing is we're doing this Lola mission. We're running through Maceo. I got this set to like the second difficulty. We're not, we're not, we're not being a hero right now. All right, we're just trying to get this done. And at the same time, I'm gonna do my best to share some of my mental health tips that just kind of like, you know, get me through what days. Oh, jeez. Off on talking about mental health and all of a sudden you're dying. That's like the opposite of what you're trying to do. Uh, the other guys. Okay. Way, dog. Day, okay. But yeah, I um I'm far from like a pinnacle of perfect mental health. Definitely Daddy, definitely not someone who is very familiar with the term mental stability. Do you know However, where they are? I've been doing pretty well recently. And it's to the point where, like, you know, I want to share some of the things that help me out with it. Like, I do got a list pulled up ahead, you know. I want to make sure that I'm getting out good content and shit. But, but, I think that a lot of it really does come down to how you view a situation. Obviously, like, there are a lot of things that, like, there... There's no amount of positive thinking that you're gonna get out of certain situations just because that's not, that's just not how life goes. But in general, we do got a few options for how to manage anxiety, stress, depression, things like that. And I think that they're worth exploring. So, First thing that I'm gonna recommend, I'm gonna switch my loadout real quick. First thing I'm gonna recommend is something that like physically helps me. And that's box breathing. Box breathing is when it, it's it's an actual uh, it's an actual thing used by different professionals that physically need to keep their heart rate slow, sort of deal. You basically breathe in for four seconds, like you take a nice big breath in and you count one, two, three, four. I've heard people go to six and to eight. Um, Lola, the mudslide I don't really know about Nothing's all of that. I personally do four seconds. Good. You hold it they for four seconds. So you breathe in for four easier. seconds, you hold it I'm going for to four check seconds. The near the control tower then you relax it for four seconds, you breathe out. And then you hold that for four seconds. So it's really about a cycle of maintaining your breath and counting it. And I find that honestly, that, that alone goes so far just because you get lost in counting. You feel me? Like you will literally get lost in counting Hola. shit out. Got Commander Pig Fucker in sight. And you're, you're, you're just gonna slowly like kind of so kind of relax. And I always think that's a positive. Another thing you can do that I found is pretty helpful is a uh, little something called radical acceptance, which it's never fun. It's never fun, but you just gotta look at some situations and say, fuck it, this is the situation. No matter what it is, you literally just have to absolutely take it and just accept the fact that, hey, you're in a rough spot. You don't really know what to do, but you're just accepting it and you're going to move forward. Ah, oh, God damn it. We're fucked. We're big fucked. I'm rusty. I've been playing so much Fallout. This ain't even that hard. God damn it. 
But yeah, box breathing is super helpful. Radical acceptance goes a very long way. Because I found that I'll start to dwell on shit, right? Like, I'll start, I'll start to be like, oh no, like, uh, I'm getting fucked up by my situation. Like, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not doing well right now. Everything is spiraling. And then, sometimes you just gotta look at yourself and say, okay, things are not going well right now. And that shit's kind of hard to do, I'm not gonna lie. Like... <laughs> Because once you accept that, you kind of need to start moving from there, but you've accepted things, so you can start moving from there. And I just find that that's a really good way to start the process. But 100%, I, I just... Unless I acknowledge that I'm going through a situation, I'm not, I'm not going to really deal with that situation like I should be. And I think that kind of laying everything out for yourself and going, this is okay, I accept this, this is how it is, I, I think gives you a sort of power over mental health struggles, and I think that that's a really important thing to have, especially when you're going through incredibly chaotic times. Oh, jeez. So, those two things are super big for me. Um, they're two things that I do personally focus on literally daily, no matter what's going on in my life. What the fuck is this person doing? So, those are, those are just two things that, like, no matter what's going on, when I start to try to employ those things, for me personally, it works. Keep in mind, everyone's different. You may find different success with different things. I think that it's important just to try and get out like what works for different people so that we can all kind of go from there. But um, yeah, those two strategies alone have taken me a really long way. Those are two different things that I, le I learned throughout my time in therapy that like I, I didn't find to be bullshit, that I didn't find to give me like false hope, that I found like actually solved my problems fairly immediately. So that's kind of where I'm coming from with sharing about those things. Other things though, because there, there, there's a whole swath of things. Hold up, I'm gonna reset my recording. Reset it. In. All right. So the next two things, pretty similar. But I find them to be fairly important to me. Everyone may have different access to these things just because of what they are, but uh, yeah. So, when things start to get, start to get again, real bad for me, I'll, call when I'm near the apartment blocks. I'll reach out to friends and I'll try to spend time with people. Like, it doesn't matter what it takes, like, I'll, I'll do what I can to really, you know, start another war. excuse me. To really do what I can to not be alone, just kind of be surrounded by people that I fuck with that make me happy, because mindset mindset plays a massively important role to how you react to the situations around you. And if you're surrounded by people you love, you're you're just gonna automatically put yourself in a better position to deal with things. But that's not always available. People aren't always available. So personally. I rescued a dog. His name is Jimmy. I love my dog. Oh man, we're big fucked. We're big fucked. No! It's over. RIP. One love. <laughs> but yeah, because family and friends aren't always available, either to talk on the phone or to spend time with, you know, I, uh, I rescued a dog, his name is Jim. And let me tell you, he gets me more active throughout the entire day just because I need to be walking him. He helps spread in my mood all the time. If you, if you don't know the feeling of coming home after a long day to a dog, I feel bad for you, son. Like, it's just so positive. Dude literally has all the love to give. And I, like, it's just amazing. 
So like, before I go into the next point, it's just because I do gotta kind of like reference my list. Um, I just want to point out that like rescuing this dog has done such incredible things for me mentally, physically. Like, I'm sus. I'm sus as fuck. I don't. I. I don't want to blow up again. But um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll check while I run this under some water. I'm about to tell a story about my dog, but the next point kind of ties into that. Next point was. Sometimes when I feel really rough, I don't want to be around people. Like, that's the last thing that I want just because I know that, like, I can have a very negative attitude at times when I'm feeling rough and that it's very influential to people around me because I can get super existentially upsetting and there, 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 there aren't answers to a lot of the things that bother me. Like, there just aren't. Like, it's just a matter of accepting that there are issues out there and that... I have issues and that everyone has like inherent issues just because we're all fucking human. You feel me? So sometimes when I'm in those spots, that's when I I don't like to fully isolate myself for a long period of time. I find that to be unhealthy and also super dangerous. Like you you really end up in a difficult spot for so many different reasons when you isolate yourself. And it's not fair to you, it's not fair to the people around you, and you're really not giving yourself a fair chance at healing. Like it like really it, it ain't it ain't right to do to yourself like that. So I believe that the healthy option is going hiking. I like hiking because you can do it for, I personally only go out at most about a day. Like I'll pick, I'll pick a long trail and just kind of like get a nice playlist going. Something meditative, something, some, something to like really help relax me. Um, shit, there we go. Something meditative, something to really help relax me and make me feel positive about my situation. And I just end up doing it. Like, I'll spend the entire day out there. I'll usually bring my dog because, like, he fucking loves hiking and all that it brings. Because he gets to sniff so much stuff. And that shit's just an immense positive. Like, mentally, just spending the day with the dog and going to do those things. Like, come on. Come on. Ain't a thing I'd rather be doing. Let me be mindful of where the shade here is. Cojone! Where can I cool this down? Jeez. It's not looking good. I really don't want to have to run this back again. We gotta do what we can to at least get within the confines of where it'll reset us. If we die. Full sprint, come on. Come on. Let's go! Ain't no fucking way we're living. Yeah, yeah. As long as we don't have to reset the full thing, I'm content. So, listen, when, just to kind of like continue with the theme of going for a hike with my dog sort of deal and to tell the story that I mentioned earlier. You see some crazy shit in nature, dog. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you. I've literally taken my dog hiking sort of deal. And out of nowhere, he starts pulling me off the track or off the trail. Like, I have no idea what the fuck he wants. I have no idea what's going on. He's just like, absolutely fucking set on sniffing these few things. And he's, he carries me for about a mile, mile and a half. And I'm just like, what the fuck is happening here? So to be like, like why, why, why is this happening? 
Why is he being like this? He's usually such a good boy. But <laughs> eventually, this bull takes me up to a fully like eviscerated fucking alligator. Like I'm, I'm talking, I'm talking. I saw an alligator with its guts pulled out, and it looked fresh. Like all I'm think, like I'm thinking literally two fucking things at that moment. I'm thinking one, oh my god. Like, this was a fucking dinosaur attack. And two, whatever did that is still out there. I can't take those fights, neither can my dog. My dog is like 20 some pounds. Like, he's, he's not a big dog. Like, I'm like, I gotta get both of us the fuck out of here. And that was the first time I had run a mile. Like, we had to go way more than a mile, but it was the first time I had run a mile since like, fucking middle school. You know? High school. <laughs> and, you know, it, it, it's goofy, but like, dogs really do be getting you out. If you're not really a dog person, I get it, but like, if you are, and you're kind of considering rescuing a dog, the situation allows for it, let me tell you. It is. It has been the most rewarding like experience in my life, and it just keeps getting better. You okay? I've got mud in all my cracks, and this place is a total horror show. Like, I, I, I really, really, you? really can't overemphasize how great it is. But continuing, continuing. I like to call family and friends. Like, it's not something that ever like. Not everyone is close with family, not everyone has friends that they feel they can call like in those moments. And I get that, but at the same time, I feel like it's very important to establish those relationships with a few different people and really build a small mental health support network around yourself. Because we, <laughs> humans can just lift each other so much. Like there's so much that we could do for each other. We can really elevate each other and build together and I, I i feel like that's why we have family that's why we have close friends that's why we have people we care about and fuck with and it's 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 when you're struggling they're gonna want to hear about it to make sure that you're doing okay boss so it's i feel like it's important to always keep those things in mind like when you are struggling because you know there are people out there who are going but you're I have a feeling some of my last point got cut off, but I do feel like it's really important to have that social network of family and friends and people that care for your mental health because they want to be there for you. Like, you're not, you're not gonna bother them by reaching out and being like, hey, I need some help, you know? You're not gonna bother them by saying that you need, uh, you need some guidance or assistance with things. And I think that's really important to remember. We really are alone in things. Now, another thing that I do personally like to do, oh, uh, this is this is literally just kind of general. I like making content like this. It helps distract me from what's really bothering me at different points. And it's just kind of just generally fun. Like, I get to play video games, talk about what's on the mind, and it's nice and cathartic. It's super relaxing, a lot of fun, and I've never once had an issue not worrying about my problems while doing it. So, there's that. <coughs> making music and making beats doing all of that like really just any kind of content and helps take my mind off things in such an amazing way that like i can't even begin to express you 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 end up going from feeling like you're at your lowest like you really can't sort your shit out to realizing not only am i in control of creating something i can create original pieces that really aren't out there I can build something new. And that in itself is also a very empowering feeling that I think is important to feel while you're struggling. 
because you you gotta recognize that like there no matter what mindset you're in you can do so much and you can accomplish so much and so i don't know i feel like i feel like taking that energy and using it to build something else is always going to be very positive obviously it's it's easier said than done in a lot of situations just because life is a motherfucker dog. <laughs> like things are rarely going to be perfect. And working with that isn't isn't easy. Doing your best work under those circumstances, it's it's just really it gets to you. And I can definitely appreciate that. But that's why I also am a firm believer in sinking into your hobbies when you start feeling a little off mentally. I think that you can really benefit yourself by developing developing different projects for yourself that are within the confines of your interests. Just to build stuff up, to build yourself up, I think that that's absolutely massive for people. And I, I, I really love to see that message kind of spread more there. Um, like, there's, there's really so much to doing stuff that you love that makes you feel calm. That's beneficial. It, like, it'll go such a far fucking long way. And I feel like, I feel like we all deserve that. Like, why, why would you not deserve to feel good about yourself, to feel special, to feel like you're, you're doing great, to feel like you're learning and contributing stuff? You feel me? So, this is, this, this point, very different from everything else so far. But, I feel like this shit is so important. <coughs> Make sure that you're actually made, like, tending to yourself. Make sure that you eat. Make sure that you drink. Make sure that you stay hydrated. Make sure that you're feeling good. You know? Make sure that you get enough sleep. If you're feeling really stressed and anxious and you're freaking the fuck out, there's maybe a good reason for that. And a good reason for that is your body's not feeling regulated and it needs more in some way. You feel me? So like, make sure that you're hydrated, make sure you're drinking water, make sure that you're eating. These things are really important. And in the same way, it's also important to find different ways to be mindful of how we can improve ourselves and how we can do different things. So while you are relaxing a little bit and while you're just kind of enjoying things, and you know, taking a step back. I I think that I think that one of the things that we can do to really, really, really make ourselves feel better is look for ways to improve ourselves. Not necessarily going out there and being like, okay, I'm gonna start a diet tomorrow and all of a sudden I'm gonna work out to the fucking rock standard. Like you don't need to set that high of an expectation for yourself, sort of feel. You can just find different ways to maybe approach situations that have been bothering you and think about things differently. It's not its not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, you know, but it is something to do while you're struggling and not feeling great because I find that if you think about something more positive and you think of ways to better yourself, you're gonna realize even faster that there's a mechanism of action to making yourself feel good. There's a way to accomplish it quickly. There's a way to do it in a way, there's a way to do it that works for you, you know? And I think that, I think that's a really important fucking thing to find. And I think that finding it is really one of the most special things. So next few things are just kind of distraction type measures that I kind of like. Let me reset my recording. Reset it. So, 
some of the distracting things that I like to do, just really, really, really take my mind off things. Like, there's no improving my situation. I'm either, I'm either not at fault or I've messed up and I need to give something time and I'm getting antsy. Just sit down on the couch, watch some TV. I like to watch South Park, American Dad. Uh, not really Family Guy. I like the Cleveland show more than I like Family Guy. Um, oh shit. Resetted it. I messed up there. I exited out. I exited out of uh, Far Cry instead of, uh, you know, resetting my recording. But I like to watch cartoons. Really, really, really lighthearted things. Like... I don't want to watch something heavy. I don't really watch stuff like BoJack Horseman anymore. I really fucking love that show. Phenomenal. One of the best pieces of television I've ever watched in my entire life. But like, now when I'm watching TV is to feel better or to be distracted. And I think that's a good way of keeping it for me personally, everyone's different. Similarly, read a book, bro. Pick up a fucking book. Like, I'm not saying you gotta be out here reading the highest of literature, the pinnacles, but I mean, it's fun. Go to a bookstore, look, look, look for something that interests you, you know? Like really engage with the story, take some notes on it maybe. Like, I can guarantee that if you find something that interests you enough, you'll probably get lost in it. And that's, that's always really worth it. Another thing to do, shit man, I like taking a really nice shower. Whether it's uh, hot or cold, like that's, depends. You need but to freshen up that gear. Overall, overall, there, you, can, you can take a nice shower. It's a good way to approach a lot of different problems. Let me see. All right, I'm gonna buy these things first. Another thing that you can do that's pretty similar to the last few things is just listening to music. I uh, pick an album, listen through it. I like listening through Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. I like uh, I like MF Doom's Victor Von Tate. Like, you know, just stuff that you can really get bump into. I feel like I feel like getting lost in getting lost in activity is a really big deal. So again, again, this is really important. <laughs> I label I like I listed this twice. It's really important. Make sure that you had something to eat. Make sure that you had something to drink. Make sure that you're well rested. Make sure that you're taking care of yourself. It's really important to maintain these things. And I also think that it's important that while you're doing stuff to try to improve your mental health, it, keep in touch with some people about it. Be like, oh, yo, dog, I'm about to, I'm thinking about going out tonight. Would you like to go? Make a plan with someone. Make a plan with someone you don't want to cancel with under any circumstances. Make sure you you follow through with it. Let me switch. Uh, let me switch to my Running Man logo because we're about to do quite a bit of running. Like, like keep yourself accountable in different ways that aren't like too forceful for yourself or the people around you because they're out there. <laughs> they're out there and they're worth pursuing. They could really put you in a different spot all around. Why isn't it letting me pull my bow out? God damn, all right. And yo, like main, <laughs> keeping that going can really help you keep going. Just because there are people that are checking on you. Hey, we went out like a week or two ago. How you feeling? You wanna do it again? Huh? Or maybe it's, uh, maybe it's out. I haven't heard from you. You feeling all right? Shit like that. It, it's just generally, in my opinion, it's generally good. You know, I, I don't think that you really need to step too far outside of your comfort zones to accomplish that. Um, 
and I don't like I, I don't think that it's really something that's required like stepping out of your comfort zones is required to accomplish that this is something you can really do another thing that I I personally enjoy is I really like writing man I'll write I'll write stuff like this where like I'll just like list out some things and I'll be like yeah this is this is how it is this is how I feel about things like not really keeping a journal but more so just it's going through my mind. Um, I also like to write music. I like making some beats, you know, writing like composition sort of deal. I like writing different stories. You know, just easy. So I'm gonna get the creativity going and get your mind off whatever is bothering you at that very moment. Because in many, many, many situations, you do not need to immediately resolve them. You don't, in that very second, unless, like, it, live situation, you can just take a step back. But, uh, another thing. Bro, don't be scared to reach out to a therapist. Therapy isn't scary. They don't, they don't, they don't make you like delve into deep childhood traumas like right off the bat. Like if you find a good therapist, you're going to feel comfortable talking to them about those things. You're not going to feel, you're not going to feel overwhelmed talking to them about those things. It's going to be a very nice and easy process for you. And I find that there's, there, there are financial barriers to doing it. And there's also a stigma to doing it that I think that we've done we've gone a really long way in erasing that stigma of pursuing therapy and it warms my heart to be honest like I think that shit is so important and I think that it's really nice that people aren't getting bullied for going to fucking therapy you know I it it's always something worth pursuing personally i believe that people should go to a therapist like they do a dentist just like twice a year yearly checkups you know even if you are uh, even if you don't need it even if you don't think you need it you can just kind of stop it and be like hey let me get you caught up on what's going on here's the situation here's what i'm dealing with and either it's all right hey keep staying the path or here's here are just some suggestions Stuff like that. You have a way to move forward. Big, big advocate for therapy. Another thing that I do, I um, I don't, I don't fully recommend using substances to get your mind off problems. Let me switch my class real quick. Reset my recording. Reset he spaghetti. Um, I really, really, really don't think that using substances are, like, is a solution to all your problems. Even if it's something as benign as weed. It's like, that, that shit is not going to hurt you. But at the same time, at the same time, Sometimes feelings are overwhelming. Sometimes you need to slow your brain down. And if you're an adult and you have access to uh, something like marijuana, that is something I personally enjoy to uh, take the edge off as opposed to drinking or using harder substances. Just because, bro, you smoke some weed in a dog and watch adults swim, and tell me that you have more problems than someone who just got blackout drunk and tore through their neighborhood. One of you is motherfucking relaxed. The other one of you is, has, has probably caught massive charges. <laughs> one, like one of you had a great fucking night indoors, relaxing, spending time with yourself on the couch the other one of you dropped a ton of money on liquor, which, hey, if you drink and you smoke and all that stuff, more power to you, boss. But um, it's not where I like to lose my money. But like, in my eyes, you drop money there. 
You ain't even remember that shit. Right? And then on top of it, you've done some foolish shit. Like, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm a big supporter of just smoking weed and letting the chips fall where they are for an evening because it, it'll relax you. If nothing else, it, it'll fucking relax you. Like, you know, that's that's usually the main goal of getting through anxiety attacks, panic attacks, rough mental health episodes, things like that. So, less seriously, I like to put on a silly outfit sometimes. Keep that fucking pickle suit on me. All right, like, if things get real bad, I like to not take the situation or myself seriously. You try looking in a mirror at yourself in a pickle suit. Taking yourself seriously. If you can do it, your ego is unrivaled and you likely don't even have a problem in the first place. All right, so there's that. More seriously, I like to get off my phone. I um, I personally get overstimulated a lot, especially when I'm struggling. And so removing myself from my phone, from different like text conversations, Snapchat conversations, like Facebook, social media, all of that, and just focusing on mindfulness activities. I find that doing that alone is, <clears throat> It goes so far and it's really hard as as someone that spends most of his time on his phone like on my computer in some capacity and at least listening to something like it's hard to break that habit but to do so has been very 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 freeing very liberating in the sense that hey man I don't feel like I have that connection to something in my pocket that holds me back like that. Should disable the alarm. A lot of people are able to have much healthier relationships with technology. I just I just have ADHD. And I'll I'll really get wrapped up in it for a Shit. minute. Checkpoint. Next thing. Similar to watching TV, it's another distraction thing. I like watching movies, man. I uh Fine. You don't gotta get into the uh, peak cinematic experiences in this world. But like, ooh, that does that is a nice addition. But like, you know, just throwing on something dumb, like the original Blob movie, come on. So it's a good way to kill an hour and a half, two hours. Um, also, some of these things do require having money sort of deal uh, to an extent but if i'm able to and things are real rough i do like to treat myself i'll go out i'll get like I'll, I'll go on a john date like i'll go on a date for myself like i'll go pick up food that i like i'll go do some shit that i enjoy with my dog <laughs> And I'll go back home and I'll have one of my favorite movies, like ready, all set up. I'll have a comfort meal, like right there. And I'll have my favorite PJs ready to go. Like sometimes you gotta treat yourself and that, that cannot be undervalued. Um, I don't, I don't really like to, uh, to define something like this, but next thing I would say is I think I think accomplishing something goes a long way for really rough mental health times. And I think there's something to be said for getting something done and succeeding in a goal while you're struggling. Um, whether that is you finishing a homework assignment that you didn't want to do, you don't call out of work that day, you don't, you don't deal with like whatever bullshit that you've been struggling with so the guys. Oh jeez, that's not how I wanted that to go at all. Um, damn it. Fucking listen. Right. 
how you how you define accomplish something is really entirely up to you. It's not my place to say what it is. Some people, like you can you can break it down to any number of things. For me, some days accomplishing things is finishing all my work for an entire week in a few hours. Sometimes it's just getting out of bed and hitting all my deadlines for that day. Like, it really depends, but you need to acknowledge when you do something right, when you do accomplish something, and you need to acknowledge that, hey, I don't feel great today, but I got something done. I did something today. Something happened. Like, I th again, I think it's important to really empower yourself in these situations. Another thing. Some, if, if, if I'm able to, and really only if I'm able to, because when I get anxious, I get really shaky hands. If I'm able to, I like to go for a drive. I, uh, I find that just bumping some music that I like, and like throwing all my windows down and letting my car go burn, relaxing. I live in Florida though, we, we got some sus fucking drivers. So sometimes it activates my rage, but that's, that's just gonna happen in Florida. I'm gonna reset my recording real quick. Reset it. So another thing that I like to do whenever I'm really going through is I like to find different, like, different small items, non-complex working items. I like taking them apart and I like putting them back together. I, I don't know shit about engineering. I don't know shit about craftsmanship. I, like, I, I did not grow up in a situation where that was really prioritized. And low key, that kind of always disappointed me, you know? Like, I, I would like to be a crafty person. I would like, Better watch my step. I would really like to be able to uh, create things that impress I people, but happen. like, I never the learned how to do that. Out. So, Actually learning how to do that has been a blast. Like, it's a great way to fill the time just a little bit. And you really, really end up learning how to do some really cool things. So, like, that in itself, in my opinion, is massively worth it. How did... How has... Jeez. But yeah, I've learned how to put together like some speakers. I've learned how to, <laughs> I've learned how to put together my Xbox controller. I've learned how to do so much like bullshit that like I just would not have done otherwise. If I hadn't like just, you know, anxiously ripped something apart and put it back together. Like that shit, that shit is fun. And similarly, learn a dumb skill. Like, I, uh, we all, we, we all got different things we can learn how to do. We all got different tank. attitudes about how to accomplish things, you feel me? I'm gonna blow this tank up. No, I'm not. He wasn't getting in. But, yeah, there are so many different things that you can do if you just take the time to figure it out. And dumb skills usually don't take that long to learn. Like, I bet if you spent an afternoon on it, you could probably learn how to juggle three, four balls. Is that useful to you? Fuck no. Is that a fun skill to know? Fuck yes. <laughs> Automatically the most fun person whenever someone has three tennis balls nearby. You know? So, one of those dumb skills that I kind of picked up is... Bear with me here. This one's a work in progress. I still got a lot to do with this guy. This is the base of a John Joe. Now, does it sound good yet? No. 
but I've also made other successful iterations of the John Joe. It's not hard. It's not hard to build instruments, dog. It's it's actually a lot of fun, and there are a lot of great YouTube tutorials. I, I don't have one for the John Joe. That's a proprietary blend, and I can't be giving that out to people. Too much flames in a piece of fucking plywood, some fishing wire. But, uh, you know, build goofy things. Have fun. Another thing that you could do is... I like to call these things side quests, but in reality, it's just helping out your friends. <laughs> like, literally reach out to a friend and ask if they need some help with something. Whether it's an artistic project, whether it's schoolwork, whether it's like crunching any kinds of numbers, dog, literally anything. You know, just like see if you could lend a hand. I find that helping others is a rewarding way to kind of deal with your own problems because you're, you're more concerned about your friends than you are for yourself in a lot of situations. Unfortunate, kind of just the way it is sometimes. But um, yeah, I feel like, I feel like doing that is uh, one really, really, really good way to deal with things. Um, above all, this ain't the last point and this definitely isn't the above all. But I think that it is fairly important. Bro, I like to be fucking comfortable when I'm struggling. I'm talking... I'm talking like... I'm wearing the softest pajama bottoms right now. Right? Like, these are, these are damn near elephant pants. Just because they're comfy. I washed them earlier today. I knew, like, today was going to be a stressful day. I was going to have a... Good game. We're getting that uh, gunpowder over there. I'm not sleeping on that. Um, like, it's been a stressful day. Like, I'm chilling right now. Like, ain't no worries. Just been long, so I was like, all right, fuck it. Let me get my favorite soft PJs out. Let me get my favorite t-shirt out. Let me get comfy. I think that physical comfort is super important. Additionally, in line with comfort, you gotta be comfortable with where you're living, whatever your living arrangement is, whatever your space is. I don't wanna be the guy to say, go clean your fucking room. But at the same time, if you're feeling really anxious, you don't know what to do, and you're just sitting around, you got nothing going on, and you notice that you have a really dirty room, that room may be giving you a level of anxiety, now, I, I don't know, I, I, I'm no doctor, but that room may be providing a certain level of anxiety and clearing it up will either, you know, solve that problem or it'll distract you for an hour or so and you'll start feeling good anyway because you're not thinking about your problems anymore. Um, do -do -do. I have get very comfy listed again. But I think, uh, I think I've emphasized that point about as much as it needs to be emphasized. Uh, another thing that I like to do. These literally, again, again, these are all different things that work for me. I, I hope that they work for other people. But one thing that I did learn in therapy is there's no catch-all solution. A lot of advice that people give is specifically for themselves, what worked for them. And it's about trying as many different things until you can make a list about of what works for you. Resetting recording, reset it. So with that being said, one of the things that works for me, bullying boomers on Facebook, I've caught so many post blocks just because I was having a rough day and I was like, dog, it would be absolutely fucking hilarious to argue with this person. And to be honest with you, I'm never right for doing it. You know, oh man, we, we don't have the Volta. It's not really worth switching out sort of deal. Um, but, but, right. 
Like I'm not say, I'm not saying don't bully people, but I am saying go find ways to make yourself laugh. That's that's important. I like I like arguing about politics and economics with people on Facebook because they're silly. They're silly and usually they don't have great opinions. They are malinformed and it's just it's just fun to talk to them because you can both learn a lot about kind of where discourse is, where education is, and where the people you really do not like are mentally. Ooh. That is not good. This is not good. They're gonna call for backup. Or maybe they won't. Maybe they won't get a chance. The most clutch supremo we've deployed. But yeah, I, I I think that I think that finding different ways to entertain yourself, finding different ways to make yourself laugh, whether it's on social media, whether it's like you know doing whatever, e e even if it's hopping on Facebook and you know bullying a boomer a little bit. Um, there's that. These next two points, like, they're, they're, I mainly did this while I was younger. Um, and I prefer to do more physical activities to deal with things. Uh, I'm still a big advocate for getting cardio out, going, going to exercise, doing things like that while you're anxious, just not, not as much as I am on other things. But, um, I used to go to a driving range and just hit golf balls for hours. You feel me? Like, just, like there was one near my house where I grew up and you just hit them into water. That's it. No other goal, you just hit the golf ball into a giant lake right in front of you. And I feel that that just clears your mind. Similarly, playing basketball or any other kinds of sports, those were always massively positive for me, and I, I got to benefit a lot from them. Like, team sports, they just kind of hit different. Alrighty, we got one last, one last place to deal with. There it is. There it is. Alrighty, I only got like three more points left. Nice. Making decent time. This is like literally about as long as I would want this to take. <laughs> but yeah, while we go into our while we go into our last mission for this. Just real quick, like I said, I like to visit, I like to visit bookstores. I like to read sometimes. Um, actually visiting bookstores is so much fun. Patronizing local businesses and checking out the really cool stuff that they have to offer. I think if you have some extra money to spend, you're looking to treat yourself. I think that those are some excellent places to reach out to and to just kind of go to. And you never know, there's a, there's a place near, oh geez, one second. Resetting recording. Reset. There's a place near my house where I started going to them just because they were a record store. Like they sold vinyls. I was just getting into collecting vinyls a little bit. And just by going there, talking to the cashiers, getting a little bit close with them, like I found, like I met the owners, the managers, all that. Like just through doing all of that, I learned so much about the music industry because it just so happens that the owners were involved in the music industry. And so you never, you absolutely never know where a ridiculous connection or some massively helpful information can come from. And so putting yourself in a spot to find it is just, it's gonna do you wonders. 
Like, it, it's mainly just a matter of forcing yourself out there as much as it sucks to do sometimes. All right, so we're on our last two points for this. All right. And I feel like, I feel like one of these is a much stronger thing to do than the other. And that's the first one I'm going to say, and that's putting on a funny hat. Again, similar to the idea of being in a pickle suit. If you put on a funny hat, I got, I got a creature from the Black Lagoon mask. Right? Like, that shit's hilarious to me. I love looking at myself while wearing that. Like, like I'm like, you're, you're a buffoon. You are an absolute fucking star graving mad lunatic. And that shit is hilarious to me. Like, you gotta find ways to laugh at yourself. Now, look what I found. So, I find, I find that putting on some silly hats, you know, it's really, it sounds funny, and it is, but it's a, it's a really good way to relax. This is a really good way to kick back. Make sure that you're not taking yourself seriously, just to kind of check yourself. Like, I, I, I just don't see why not. And then the last point that I have on here. This uh, this probably isn't something you're gonna want to uh, very seriously pursue. But um, as a guy with ADHD, bro, I drink a bang energy and let my body do whatever it wants. Like I just don't even think about things. Like I just do it. Careful, Danny. Like I just fucking send it. Beautiful things happen. You have no idea what you can accomplish if you just let your brain go first sometimes. All right, we're going loud. Yeah. I believe, I believe that means that we crushed the fuck out of this insurgency. I need to capture that truck. But yeah, I feel like I feel like there's merit to just kind of drinking some caffeine, making yourself like go burr, and kind of forcing yourself to move and just seeing what happens. I feel like there's there's a level of goofiness to that that produces a level of results that you could either be proud of or laugh at. And I feel like that's very conducive to feeling better in rough situations. That was the last point that I had. That was the end of the insurgency. Now we just gotta go buy everything from Lola and then we're good. I usually crumple up my lists. I like this list. I'm gonna keep this list. But yeah, like, like I said, those may not work for you. They may not work. For other people but um just some ideas Work, working with your mental health is always going to be an uphill battle it's unfortunately always going to be a little bit difficult and you're going to find that there are no correct answers there are just many different ways to handle and so those those are just kind of the things that i do It's not, they're not guaranteed, guaranteed perfection, but uh, I find that a few of those things really do improve my day. Let's go talk to Lola. I would like to reset and Camp Maximus like next week. I've only been playing Far Cry 6 for the Insurgencies recently, just because I've been doing a ton of other let Let's Plays and like trying to get a shitload of other content ready. But, um, yo, 
Like, I, I want to be in the right camp for what we're in next session in case I gotta buy a Gadgeteer Gyoza because that thing is so important. <laughs> You'll notice we don't walk around with not that many equipment things. We have access to a ton of equipment. It's intentional. We want to build your classes to give you access to as much as possible. I got this shit set to guerrilla, guerrilla mode. Um, why is that so hard? I got it set to guerrilla mode, and <laughs> I gotta maximize all of my fucking storage. Love them sounds of Camp Maximus. Lola, I've come to purchase the rest of your inventory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No customers. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, you mean I don't got the money, brother? How much bread do I need? Oh, you joking? Oh yeah. I didn't want to have to do this. Reno's so. been raving about you. Said you're. But we're gonna do it. All right. Easiest setting. Ah, it's. Reconnect while you're connecting to the Far Cry 6 servers. Excuse me. I want to get everything bought on camera. This isn't even required. This is just because... I, I refuse to get beat by a game. See, it's not, but it kills the time. <laughs> I have two perfectly functioning guitars in the corner that get little to no love. And can I play guitar very well? Fuck no. Resetted spaghetti. So you sell goods out of your taxi? Yes, yes, and I get hot gossip from my fares. It's how I. Welcome to Mesozoic Park. First thing to do, always. Second thing to do, I, um, I'm gonna throw my running man mode out. And, uh, just gonna check my, uh, watch. The visitor center is shit it's been too long can't remember look for the old park maps you should say i'll keep the meter running for you <laughs> you charging me for this <laughs> never cheap <coughs> 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 Thank you. 
we're doing this as fast as possible. And this is being done entirely. <coughs> <coughs> Dang. And this is being done entirely out of spite. Because I couldn't afford, I, th I think it was a helmet. Got a whole life to be living and I'm doing this over a helmet. Now, ladies and gentlemen, with everything that we've talked about, that's what we would call unhealthy mental behavior. But it's also okay in this case because we need to get content, you feel me? I'm disabling all these enemies. Immediately going loud. Because they have no alarms. I did not loot her. You don't need that key anymore. While I leaped on her. There's the weapon. Changing my loadout to the running man. Alrighty. We're gonna do this real quick. Lola, got the weapon. Heading back to you now. Shit, you are good, Keria. Keep, keep that weapon cool in the shade or with water. I said, okay, grab me something from the gift shop. Uh, Alright, we're playing on easy, so we really blood. don't need to like pull this game. off as frequently. So I'm just gonna haul ass. <laughs> I'm also a lot more familiar with this map than I am with Sale. Like, I actively avoid Maseo when I'm playing in my free time, just because like, I know that it's a shorter route, but at the same time, fighting in the buildings, it's just, it's not for me, boss. We had to cool this down once so far. <laughs> Main. Sneaky little bee, buzz buzz. Pretty straightforward. I'm gonna reset the recording. Reset it spaghetti. I think I love. 
Lola, I'm at the front. Where the hell are you? I had to dodge some patrols. You're going to have company soon. I'll deal with them. Just get here and don't crash the car. Danny, so professional. Have some fucking respect. ATV, That was a really bad shot. So was that. Jeez. Better cool this off okay. in the water. Those gentlemen are dealing with the smoke. Yeah. I love when they do most of my work for me. There's something that is different about getting the medics that shoot the poison with poison. Good. There's some water. So satisfying. Got to cool this off in that water. Honestly, this is just personal opinion. Using the poison on this level is super helpful. Um, the poison is generally just awesome. Um, very underrated in my opinion. But it doesn't just let you deal with a shitload of enemies very quickly. Like, you create diver- you can create up to like five diversions in a second. Like, how nice is that? Damn. They're making it hard on old John. Jesus. What the fuck? Okay, there we go. Better cool this off in the water. Son. Matter of fact, imagine getting killed by an EMP arrow. Imagine. It's not a bad time. And I got the money I needed to purchase the last thing from Lola's shop. Don't mind me, I'm just staring at this loading screen.
I got a. Uh, I got some big sleeping plans after this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I did all of that for a fucking hat. What am I ever gonna use that? I bother myself. Either way, I appreciate y'all. Peace out. Have a great one. Until next time.